Hi and welcome to BND TV. We have created a series of talks for you entitled The Secrets of Sleep and Success. We are on a mission to empower 1 million people or more harness the awesome power of sleep to dramatically improve the quality of their lives. We hope you enjoy. Today it is my privilege and honor to have Dr. Rati Godrej with us. She is such an accomplished person and she is a physician. Her primary focus is on prevention of chronic diseases and she is on the board of the Harvard THN Center in India as well as the Public Health Foundation of India. It is just amazing that a person with so much knowledge and such accomplishment is here with us today. Uh, to talk about sleep and success. Thank you, Baba. It's a real pleasure to be here. I've read your book and I thought it was fascinating read and um, it has an application for all of us to learn so much from that book that I'm happy to be here and ask you a few questions that I had as I read through your wonderful book. So, as you mentioned, my focus is on prevention of chronic diseases. and many people understand the connection between sleep and diseases and they often think that it's the disease that's causing problems with sleep and that is sometimes true but there are many diseases that are actually caused or exacerbated by sleep either the lack of sleep or not having very good quality of sleep and uh, I think of diseases in terms of different organ systems. So one organ system is of course our endocrine system and there are women who are constantly I think um, challenged by hormonal imbalances. This can be from thyroid or even glandular like diabetes and um, as you know melatonin is also a hormone secreted by the pituitary gland. So we're finding out that sleep is extremely important. for these different endocrine functions what advice do you give to women who come to me and who are struggling sometimes asking for a prescription for sleeping tablets about how they should go about improving their sleep whether it's because they have found that behavior therapy with tablets works much better than just having uh, a sleeping pill i think one of the things that we all need to understand is human beings are creatures of habit we like things to remain the same mm-hmm. right our bodies love a schedule mm-hmm. so if you just fix the time of food what time you are having food mm-hmm. so say you have breakfast at 8 o'clock you have lunch at 1 o'clock you have dinner at 7 pm uh, and you fix your bed time i will go to sleep at 10:30 i will go to sleep at 11:30 doesn't matter mm-hmm. and you fix your wake up time even on weekends Mm-hmm. uh you would have sorted 98% of the problem out really because that discipline yes routine. it that just routine. requires that discipline that routine uh you know i had gone through a terrible terrible uh bout of acidity really bad acidity and uh, at that time i was traveling and teaching even in in the us i had um, you know consulted some real experts mm-hmm. and uh they were from the alternative side they were from the you know from the mainstream allopathic, allopathic side, side. Right. and i would get relief for a day 3 days a week and then it would come back mm-hmm. <laughs> and then amazingly what happened was i i i went to a fr- doctor friend of mine in chembur in bombay mm-hmm. and uh, he's a ear doctor after he finished cleaning my ears he asked me so baba is there any other problem so i told him my whole sob story of the acidity and all that so he listened to everything he said baba all you need to do is eat on time that's all he said mm-hmm. and then i gave him many reasons why i couldn't eat on time i have flights to catch i have courses to teach you know i must have talked mm-hmm. for like 7 8 minutes so he listened to everything and he looked directly in my eye and said okay then suffer right. and that was like a you know right <laughs> solid right. slap right he said baba just do it for 15 days and 15 days i he said you have to be if you are having your breakfast at 9 you are your window is 8:58 to 9:02 mm-hmm. you have to have it exactly on time wow and i started doing that 
and Rati, I tell you, within 10 days, no symptoms. It was gone. It's something that was there for two, three years. And so for people who are having these imbalances, I think the imbalance in the body is, is a reflection of the imbalance in their lifestyles. Mm -hmm. You know, too many late nights, uh, too much junk food, right. too much food at all kinds of weird times of the day, you know, snacking, right. you're sitting watching TV, just eating some chips. Right. Uh, you oh, one bag of chips, what difference does it mean? It's not one bag of chips. It is so a uh, few hundred bags of chips that you've had over, uh, over the years, years, which have added up. Right. and which has messed right. up your system right. and the only thing you need to do to reverse it is just come back to the basics fix the time fix the diet and you're sorted so really take ownership of your own yeah. health yeah. wonderful the other thing we are seeing now and i think the day is going to come where we're going to be actually measuring whether people are sleeping enough or sleeping well they're working on biomarkers that are going to tell us this but until we have that we already know that um, sleep deprivation is a huge risk factor for hypertension, for diabetes, and for stroke and heart disease, including plaque rupture and myocardial infarctions, as well as certain types of heart failure. So what do you recommend to people in terms of meditation? Because we know that cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in, in the world. Uh, for men and women now, and what do you recommend for people to do before they go to sleep so that their cardiovascular system is in a much more relaxed state, and early in the morning, the cortisol and the other hormones are less, which are known to cause vasoconstriction and a higher risk of cardiac events happening? So again, the answer is surprisingly simple. Okay. Uh, for the mornings, you do need the cortisol and the adrenaline to yeah. wake you up. Yeah. There is no doubt about it. Yeah. But they need to be secreted gently and slowly into the system so you're slowly roused from your slumber. Right. Most people have an alarm clock. Right. It goes beep, 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 beep. Or it can have a very, very pleasant tune. Yeah. But the brain registers this as danger. Right. Right? And so it floods your system with adrenaline Excess. and cortisol, right. which then lingers through the day. Yeah. And so you become more irritable, more angry, more grumpy on the emotional side. And of yes. course, your uh, risk for cardiovascular diseases, uh, hypertension, stroke, all that increases dramatically. Right. And people just don't get it. Shut the alarm clock. You don't need an alarm clock in your bedroom in the morning. Hmm. I have a little hack here. Okay. Use the alarm clock to set your bedtime. <laughs> so let it beep at 9.30 okay. p.m. to tell you, hey, shut down, start your winding down ritual. It's very important to have a ritual before you go to bed because it gives all the right signals to the brain that day is over, time to sleep. Right. Uh, a simple act of just taking a shower and wearing fresh clothes yes. for the night is a huge indicator to the brain that one... No, the day is done and night mm -hmm. is starting. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you can build up a, a winding down ritual, and we've talked about it in our book, Sleep yes. Your Way to Success, yes. um, and given various options, yes. uh, if you can build up a ritual, and remember I said we are creatures of habit, right. and you just do that ritual every day, okay. uh, you will find that your body slips into sleep easily really? and comes out refreshed and energetic. Right. And uh, all it needs is... Don't use an alarm clock right. or use it in the night instead of right. in the morning. Right. And what do you say to young people who are looking at blue light and computers and WhatsApp and all at night and then complaining of not being able to sleep well or it's just obvious. sleeping very late? Is that a big trigger nowadays <coughs> that you're seeing for it people is. with sleep problems? Over a few million years after sunset, we saw reds and yellows of the fire, right? right? And now we see whites and blues. Mm -hmm. The white and blue are day colors. So the brain gets confused. Hey, the sun has set, but I'm seeing white and blue. So maybe the sun has not set. Right. And so it doesn't secrete the melatonin that it's supposed to. Right. And so your sleep rhythm is delayed and delayed and delayed. So instead of feeling sleepy at say 10.30 or 11 in the night, you start feeling sleepy at 2 a.m. Right. right. So again, a very simple thing to do ban white and blue light in the evenings. You know, this is such a problem in India. Uh, just yesterday, we were returning from Fort 
back to back to dadar uh -huh. and i was just mindful about all the houses mm -hmm. and you know from here to dadar uh, at least on the road that we went and on on the left side of the road obviously i couldn't see right. the right side i counted just four houses with yellow light every single house had white light in it okay. and it is no wonder that people cannot sleep then right. because the brain is continuously getting the message that the, it is data right, right? so uh, again a simple simple thing it will cost yes. like maybe 1000 2000 rupees to re replace all the lights in your right. house and make them yellow right. uh, and that could make such a big difference also on your phone there is something called night shift or twilight yes. depending on which uh, operating system you are using right. uh, which kind of makes the makes the screen more yellow okay uh, you know i have a friend uh, uh, in the ashram and he couldn't sleep so mm -hmm. what he would do is he would watch uh, boxing matches and football matches all night on his phone mm -hmm. i told him just make make this change yes and the next day he said you know baba normally when i would watch the match i would feel more awake and you know yes. but because the screen was yellow i started feeling drowsy and really? yes i did sleep at 1 am but that's better than 4 am yeah. you know sleep is easy right. <laughs> it's easy but it needs a bit of discipline and a bit of knowledge about what you should be doing or should not be doing right. which i think we have covered in great detail Absolutely. in our book beautifully covered in the book actually so that is so interesting about these changes we need to make and we can make uh, to improve our sleep the other very interesting research coming now coming out now is that sleep is highly correlated to immune system and immune system can be repairing your body um, from a disease or being able to fight off an infection as many people in covid had to deal with uh, fighting off covid with their own immune system um do you have any thoughts on sleep and meditation and what we can do to boost our immune system because that's vital i feel that's it it's vital and people just need to give that time okay uh you know what i keep hearing is i don't have the time i don't have the time make the time mm -hmm. if you are in love with somebody you know the first love you are head over heels with that person mm -hmm. don't you make the time to be with that person right don't you go out of the way to you know create nice experiences for that person yes. how did you make the time then fall in love with yourself right fall in love with good health mm -hmm. and you will find that you will end up making the time for it mm -hmm. and that's all that's required right. and they are also finding that sleep and mental health are extremely connected mm -hmm. people who have lack of sleep go through mood disorders higher depression rates and definitely higher anxiety rates so both the duration of sleep and the quality of sleep would you say are both important in trying to decrease the absolutely. risk of depression and anxiety absolutely and so we need that 8 hours of sleep and it's not just 8 hours but 8 hours of good quality sleep right a lot of sleep science says that the most used sleeping pill is a glass of alcohol mm -hmm. in the world yes. but alcohol sedates you and sedation is different from sleep so you may get you may get knocked out with the alcohol but you don't get the benefits of sleep so you may get that 8 9 hour sleep stretch but you are not going into the n3 n4 stages the deeper stages of sleep you're not getting enough rem sleep right. so you wake up groggy you wake up uh, with brain fog right. uh, you wake up feeling uh, you know tired right and the best sleep is the natural sleep and again as we as we talked fixing your timetable fixing your schedule giving priority to yourself and your own health uh, all these things matter in warding off or you know making sure that these kind of unpleasant situations health challenges don't come in the first place right i think that's the key and that's why i was so excited to speak to you because this is all about prevention which is something i'm interested in preventing diseases right. preventing mental health issues and i think sleep is a fantastic way to start healing yourself and preventing problems for later in life absolutely i went through this panic attacks uh -huh. and insomnia uh, and it was just bad lifestyle choices right. and i think i pulled through it without taking any sort of allopathic medication because right. of my meditation right 
Uh, but a lot of people think that because they meditate, they don't need to sleep. Oh, I see. As a substitute for sleep. Yeah. Okay. And what I say to them is, it's not a substitute. You have four states of consciousness, awake, dream, sleep, meditation. Okay. Now, would I, what would you say if I told you that, you know, when I'm uh, uh, dreaming, I can accomplish what I do when I'm awake? You would laugh at me, right? right? So then why do you think that when you are meditating, you can accomplish what you, what you can do during sleep? It's right. as foolish. Right. So a lot of meditators, you know, I, I, I have personally seen they will struggle out of bed at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. and come to our meditation mm -hmm. hall to meditate and fall asleep there. Right. So I tell them, just sleep in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to come. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Uh, why interrupt your sleep to meditate in Brahma Murat? And if you want to meditate in Brahma Murat, then you sleep 9 o'clock. No, don't sleep at 11 o'clock. That's right. Right? That's right. So, uh, even for meditators, I feel sleep is important. Okay. And then I get told this, but there are these advanced yogis, they can manage on 3 or 4 hours of sleep. Yeah, but they, ma they meditate 4 or 5 hours also, no? Right. So, you meditate 4 hours, sleep 4 hours, it's fine. You've got 8 hours there. Yes. If you meditate 20 minutes, you can't expect to then have four hours of sleep and expect exactly. that same rejuvenation to happen. Exactly. Right, right, right. Excellent. Thank you so much, Baba. This has been a very interesting uh, conversation, and I'm so happy that we've been able to share this knowledge and hopefully have people uh, start living it, I think, and disciplined in a disciplined way and prevent diseases in the future. So that's really what, what's most important. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rati. Real you know, pleasure to be here. You know, my ultimate job would to get you out of the job. Okay, <laughs> that's great. I would love to be unemployed. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much, you. Rati. It was Thank wonderful. You. Thank you. It really was wonderful, Baba. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and comment below. And remember to subscribe to our channel BND TV so that every time we put out a video, you get a notification right into your inbox. Remember to hit that bell button though, because that's when the magic happens.